Hello guys, I am going to make a slingshot, and I've already done a little bit of work to it, but that's okay, I'll show you what you need to do. So what you need to do, you need to cut off your fork, this is the fork, right here is the actual fork, and then you want your prongs to be about three inches long, and you want them to be about an inch to maybe a little bit more wide and you can actually have them about the minimum is about half an inch and then now you want to have your actual handle cut off at about five inches depending on your hand size but five inches is good for an all-around slingshot and now I'm going to take the bark off of it. You could just shoot it like this and shave off right here, right there, and right there. I've already done a little bit right there just for taking the bark off there and make it a little bit flat, but that's later on in the video. Stick to the end to find out what it looks like. So I'm going to take the bark off of it. I have two different types of knives. I have a longer knife for taking the bark off and not really the fine tuning stuff. And then I have a knife good for like fine, small work, like um, doing the handle or if I wanted to carve an initial in it like that. I'm using a buck knife. I like them. They're good. Now I'm going to take the bark off of it. Let me do that here. I'll just show you what I do. I'm going to take and I'm going to just, I don't want to push hard. It shouldn't take much pressure as long as your knife is sharp the better you want to it's better if you have your knife sharp while you're doing this you want a really sharp knife and it's safer to work with a sharper knife than a duller knife because you don't have to push as hard and I really like this knife because it doesn't take too long to sharpen and it also holds a good edge for a while so now I'm just going to take the bark off like this and once I have it debarked or all the bark taken off, I will be right back. Okay, so I'm about halfway through the process of debarking, and it doesn't look too pretty, but it is going to look a lot better once I'm done with it. About three fourths of the way done, and I am still doing it. And when I am done, I will be back okay so I have my slingshot I'm not completely done but here's my slingshot and now after I get it a little bit better done I'm gonna go grab some sandpaper sandpaper is really nice for when you're doing a slingshot because you can get in fine crevices like right there and also I'm going to be using my buck my little little buck knife here and I'm going to be doing fine stuff like getting these little yellow spots out and things like that. Like that. And after I get that done, I'm going to go grab my sandpaper. And I will be right back. So just want to scrub or sand like this. But you don't want to do it too hard or you'll actually put like little scratches in the wood that you can see. Okay, so I've moved. To right here because the mosquitoes down there were horrible I was in the shade but I've moved right here and now I'm just gonna sand like this and you don't want to sand too hard or you put marks in the wood and when you do it with your knife you might put a few marks in it with your knife you might be able to see there I have a few marks and that is okay as long as I use something, I could actually use my knife. Let me show you how to do that. It's a pretty cool trick that you can use with your knife. You can take the back of your knife, hold it like this. Instead of cutting like this, you take and you do like this. And you can almost use it like sandpaper. But I like using sandpaper too. I actually do this sometimes when I don't have any sandpaper available. I'll just sit here and I'll do this. And it actually shaves time. time but that is a cool trick that you can use if you don't have any sandpaper available but if you was actually in the woods you probably wouldn't even sand your slingshot 
but when you're good enough with a, sli with a slingshot, they are very useful. You can even shoot rocks out of them. I shoot actual ammo, but you could shoot rocks out of them if you want. But I'm just going to make it where it's smooth. I want it as smooth as I can get it. Oh, this is 220 sandpaper. I thought it was uh, 180. It's 220. But I'm just going to keep sanding here. And I want to get these marks out of it right there. Those marks, like there's a mark right there. I'm trying to get it. There we go. I'm trying to get it focused. There, you can see some of the marks. I'm going to try to get the marks out of the wood by just sanding it. And you really don't want to use anything. You'll need to do the handle a little bit more, the forks more, and right here a little bit more. But other than that, I'm about done. Here's a little trick you can do for doing the forks. You can take, and I'm not actually squeezing, but I'm taking, I'm doing this. And it'll actually help you get the forks sanded a lot faster if you do it like this. And sometimes you have to reposition your hand. And the tighter, if you squeeze tighter, fork down in where the forks fork. And you can also do this to it. I'm taking, I'm taking two fingers. I'm doing like this. If you're trying to do like a certain area, you can do it like that. And you can just keep do it. You could even do it like this. And those, these two ways, either doing it like this or doing it like this. Sorry, the geese are getting loud. Doing it like this works. That's my two favorite ways. And for the handle, you can do the same thing like this. Down here, I'm going to make a line like this. I'm going to take and I'm going to make a line. And then I'm going to shave it off. Just keep shaving it off like this. And just keep doing that. And you want it to be, I will show how wide you want it to be after you're done. But once I get this done, I will show you how wide you want it to be. Okay, so you want it to be about that wide, which is about a mm, quarter of an inch wide. You want it to be about that wide. Try to get the camera to focus. But the wider is about. Now I'm going to do the same to this fork right here. And once I have that done, I will do the bottom the same. Actually, no, I'll do it different. Okay, so I have the other side done. I'm, I'm going to take my knife. And I'm going to cut like the edge off. Trying to get the camera focused. Okay, so I'm going to cut the edge off like this. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around. And there's a little trick that once you get one edge cut off, you'll keep making a little edge. But that's okay, because you just keep cutting the edges off. And now, you might, after you get done, you might even have to take some sandpaper to it. But I'm going to round the bottom, or you could call it the butt. This is actually what it's called. The very bottom of it is called the butt. So now you can take and you can do this. And you just keep doing that all the way around it. And you just keep doing that. And you always want to make sure your finger is under your cutting zone. But I'm going to keep cutting the top off of it like that, or the edge. And once you have it rounded, you there's one more step and you'll be done. Hey guys, I've finished the butt of the slingshot. Now I'm going to go to the, I've finished the handle and I've finished the forks and the, i finished the actual fork. I've finished the top here and I've rounded it off that way it doesn't damage the bands going over the top. Now I'm going to figure out how I want to hold the slingshot. I'm going to hold it like this. So now I'm going to make a notch right here. And I might need to pull this back just a little bit, just like that. But that's okay. If you need to do that, I didn't make mine farther, far enough back. So I'm going to make mine a little bit flatter like that. And 
you don't even need to sand it as long as you do a good cut. But now I'm going to take and I'm going to hold the slingshot like this. And then I'm going to put my thumb right there. And then I'm going to kind of wedge it in. And I'm going to do the same thing but like this. And do not push hard. It may look like I'm pushing hard but I'm not. And now you just want to keep doing that. And then once I get that, it's better if you do it like this a little bit. And then you just want to keep going back and forth and you want to make a notch. And once you have your notch made, you that's where you'll tie your bands off. And I'll make a video on how to tie your bands on later. But this video is to how to make your slingshot. And the next video will be how to tie your bands on and how to shoot it. So, I'm making an over-the-top slingshot, and it's a pretty good kind of, I like shooting over-the-top. To me, it's more accurate, and I use flat bands. I don't use brown bands. Brown bands are inaccurate. They kind of suck. So, I'm taking, and I just keep going back and forth, just like this. And now, when I get this notch finished, I will be back. Hey guys, I have finished this notch, so now I'm going to kind of just take my knife and I'm just going to gently go back and forth like this. Just gently do that, and then now I'm going to go to fork, so once I have that finished, I will be back. Okay, so I have the notch finished, now I'm going to, hi Zeus, that's my dog, hi Zuby. Now I'm going to sand those notches. Alrighty guys, that's it, I have the notches sanded down. <laughs> Check out the next video for how to tie your bands and how to shoot a slingshot. Thank you for watching. Check out that one wicked goose on YouTube. And so my dog just found this. It's a tarantula. But thank you for watching. Check out that one wicked goose on YouTube. And please like and subscribe to my channel and his channel.